political editor Robert Peston has had a busy few years reporting on Brexit, the pandemic and the turmoil in number 10. Yet he still found time to write his first novel. Uh, yeah, The Whistleblower is a political thriller that raises a question of just how far people are willing to go to stay at the top. How could he have ever got inspiration for that? <laughs> <laughs> and he joins us now. Good morning, Robert. Well, hello. It's great to be in this oasis of calm away from the madness of Westminster. <laughs> Isn't it lovely? Isn't it lovely? It's so yeah. good to see you. And obviously you've wrote four non-fictions before. Yeah. How did you find writing a novel? I loved it, actually. I mean, the great thing about writing fiction is don't have to worry whether it's true or not, <laughs> you know. So that's... And, and also, I suppose, having lived through extraordinary periods of British history, you know, whether it was, you know, massive change in political direction in the late 90s, which is where this book is set, uh -huh. you know, as we went from Tories to the new Labour of Tony Blair or... Brexit or the sort of madness of the Johnson years. You know, I've been so close to the extraordinary people in power and I sort of wanted to sort of capture that madness, the skullduggery as well, mm. but as fiction rather yeah. than, 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 than fact. So, yeah, I had an enormous amount of fun writing Aww, it. I'm so glad. Did what people will do to get to the top and stay at the top? Well, there, as, as, I mean, one of the things that I do write about here is that there are some very, I'm afraid, bad people, both in politics and business, and they're very good at hiding it. Uh, yeah. And so, the, you know, to use that term, some of them are sociopaths, there's one or two psychopaths uh, that I've come across over the years. And so, as you say, the book is to an extent about just how far people will go either to get to the top or to preserve their positions. And the other thing is we've all been slightly gripped by those stories of sort of sexual abuse and mm. scandal of a sort of financial sort that uh, we've been seeing recently. There was quite a lot of that around in the 90s where this book is set. So there's quite a lot in this book that, weirdly, when all these events started happening recently, I thought, oh, gosh, they're, 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 they're sort of familiar to what yeah, I've just been writing yeah. about. You know what Do I mean? Do you use the people you've met down the years as kind of an inspiration? Go, well, he's a bit like that, so... Well, she's a bit like that, so I'll, t I'll extrapolate that and I'll take them as my inspiration and then turn them into, like, a proper baddie? Or... Oh, <laughs> the uncomfortable question. Do you use people and go, well, I'm, I'm kind of do, going to do a version of I know that person, what I know that person. Yeah, so, 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 you want it, so you want a book like this to be authentic and therefore everybody in it has a bit of either a person or actions that I've observed. Um, th there is only one person actually in the book who is literally taken directly from life, my late cousin, a bloke called Alan Davidson, was a very successful paparazzi photographer, and I, he died just as I was writing the book, and Aww. I just wanted to sort of do a little tribute to him. So he's, he's, he's in a slightly different name, but he's in the book. Everybody else is an amalgam. I did have a very embarrassing conversation the other day with a uh, current member of the government, well, not embarrassing exactly, but I did have a conversation with a current member of the government who said, I think I spotted myself in my, <laughs> my younger self in the book. And oh all I could say, I thought, all I could say was, well, you're a very intelligent reader. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Put your hands in your pockets and whistle walking away. Um, so tell us a little bit about the story of people. Yeah, can you tell us a little bit about the plot? Yes, of course. So it's about a journalist who works for the world's leading financial paper, which uh, has the name of the Financial Chronicle. They may <laughs> recognise there's a paper in the country with a name <laughs> a bit like that. Uh, and, and as it happens in the 1990s, which is uh, what people always, people always ask me, is the central anti-hero character you? And it is true that in the 1990s, the central character is the political editor of this paper. I was political editor of the Financial Times in the late 1990s. So, so there, are, there, are little right, right. Bit, there are little bits of the book that are also based on uh, on, on, on me, the, the central character is also slightly obsessive and a bit OCD, and that also is a. I'm, I'm not unlike that <laughs> as, 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 as well. But his sister uh, dies in what looks like a sort of horrible bicycle accident, knocked off by a van. Yeah. And he comes to suspect that all is not what it seems, that it's not an accident. And the book is really about him investigating. Uh, a massive political and indeed business scandal that led to her death. And it's all set in the run up to that famous 1997 general election, uh, which we've just, we just, just, I mean, I can't really believe it. I don't know 
Uh, you're both, I think, a bit younger than me, but I can't believe it's 25 years ago. It's extraordinary. Unbelievable, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. I'm invested already. So I've got, uh, there's a sequel as well, right? So I'm planning, so because it's gone pretty well, which I've been uh, relieved about and people will be very nice, because actually the other thing about writing fiction, with, with, when you write a non-fiction book, yeah. you sort of know which people are going to like it, because yeah. you know it's which true. which arguments yeah. people are going to actually yeah, sort of right. go with or hate. Whereas with non-fiction, you put so much of yourself in it, it's impossible to know whether people are going to... Sure. It was terrifying. Anyway, people on the whole, you know, the reviews have been nice, the comments people have left online have been very nice. So I am writing a follow-up which will be set at the time of the financial crisis uh, right. in 2008. Mm. And then, if that goes all right, we'll do one set roughly in the madness of the current... Mm. Same character. Same character, Gil Peck, uh, uh, all the way through, yeah. I have to ask you about ramifications yeah. and what's going on in number 10 at the moment and the, and the leadership challenge. We've only got 40 seconds or so, but what's your take on it? Uh, so I've never... I mean, I've covered madness in politics. <laughs> this is completely mad. The things people are saying, the events that led up to it. Um, it will be, when I get to, write, to writing the, 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 the thriller set in the present day, it's going to be difficult to come up with something more extreme and extraordinary than we're living through. Uh, if Everybody always asks me who's going to win. The answer is this is the most uncertain contest I've ever reported on, but... Uh, I do think that uh, Rishi Sunak and Penny Morden, somebody nobody's a, well, very few British people really know very much about. She must be so popular. They, they, they are, the party, they are like, definitely out ahead at the moment, yeah. and I think they may go to the runoff. Thank it's you. It's out. Give it a the ching. whistleblower. It's going to be amazing. By Robert Peston. Thank uh, you so much. You've for got holiday reading sorted. It's got to be holiday uh, reading sorted. Uh, uh,